Hello and welcome to Stampscaping 101. We're going to uh, go through a stack of these uh, stamp sketches that I completely forgot I had. I thought I was getting caught up with them. I don't know how many are here. These are from um, different lessons and maybe some compositional um, uh, explanations or whatnot that I've done at at uh, conventions or on this uh, channel here and they have just really stacked up some of them i've kind of finished off a little bit i i don't remember if it was a you know like something like this was a lesson in markers or what but i have a ton of these um little layouts here um i don't know finished to uh, with varying degrees i don't know this one's probably based on the uh the um the bridge here with the flowers, flower line bridge, blooms and bridge, that's what it's called. Um, but, okay, so these are going to be really good um, layouts for some quick lighting studies. Okay, now lighting, I mean, I totally get that's where that's confusing. Now, I've mentioned in the past where I do this simple kind of lighting schematic you know scene or layout you know where you have light and then this is dark right here okay and this is light right here and you usually have the these two areas of light divided separated by an area of darkness now that area of darkness could be five percent dark okay it doesn't have to be a hundred percent dark or something like that but just some degree of separation and what that does is it you know we avoid this type of thing, just where there's one source of light, okay? Which is fine in some cases. You haven't break in the clouds or something like that, and there's just clouds all the way around it, or you have something that's spotlit in the center there, where you can just have one area of light. But when you create this separation right here, you create a dialogue between um, light source and reflected light, okay? And it creates this, you know, kind of this visual dialogue that's going on in your pieces right here. And I'm going to show you how you can really develop that type of um, uh, whatever dynamic um, within your pieces. And then when you do this kind of separation right here, you know, there's this visual path that everyone takes when they look at some kind of, you know, finished piece. When it's something like this, their eye just goes straight to the center. But when you create something like this, there's a visual path, you know, that um, a viewer's eye will go through. So, that you, you know, when you get a finished piece like that, you can see it as like a journey or as like a, like looking through like a target or something like that. Like you're looking through like a telescope or something like that, where it's just a bullseye right in the center like that. Or do you want someone to kind of wander around in your piece, you know? So when you create this kind of dialogue, they kind of tend to go back and forth like that, okay? So, I mean, one way is not, you know, wrong and the other one right or anything like that. But I'm going to just show you, just with some grayscale applications here, how to create that type of dialogue. Okay, so when we look at some something like this, okay, now it doesn't just have to be two areas of, you know, light and dark too. This is still a little wet here. Uh, maybe I'll get a new pad, but okay, let's look, let's just start off right here, okay? Now, like I said, I'm just going to work with black, okay? And this is a really good exercise for anyone that um, really wants to get their lighting down. And, you know, if you're new to this type of uh, concept here, okay? So, in this area right here, we have this area right down here, which is like one area. Then you have this background area, which is out of the trees, okay? This little grassy area in here. And then you have the sky, so it's really three areas, so instead of just having one, two like this, um, what we're doing is we're opening it up into another area. So you have one, two, three. Light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, okay? So let me show you what that looks like in application, okay? And let's start off like this. I'm just using these cotton rounds here. I should re-ink black here. It looks really dry. I like to keep my pads around medium wetness. Okay, I don't like it super wet, okay? So, we're just taking a light touch like this, okay? And I'm creating my uh, 
dark area up top, okay? Now, when I'm going with black, I, I could be easily be doing this with blue, okay? Like, this is going to be a high noon scene or something like that, but let's just make it easy here and just go grayscale, okay? All right. Okay, now see, I'm kind of just creating that little bit of a shadow up here. Now I'm going to create my separation right here, you know, in between those light sources, okay? And we also have that uh, that Buck Large, that's the name of that stamp there in the background. Here, I'll also get these trees right here a little bit too, okay? They're going to be in kind of shadow. But let's just also just work on the general layout right here too, okay? This pad right here works better when I get it a little bit soaked. It's completely dry. That's why I was going to use a used one. Maybe I'll use this used one. It's a little bit moister right here. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's working much better. Okay. What's this right here? So you have this perimeter right here. And I'm creating a little bit of spotlighting in the center of that meadow as well. Okay, because I want the attention on that uh, buck there in the distance. Okay. Or an elk. Some, someone said it's, a, said it's a bull elk. Um, okay, so. All right. So let's see. Let's create a little separation here. Sometimes that separation, you know, sometimes that separation here is just a little bit of a swatch of uh, value coming in from the outside and it might not reach all the way in the center there either you know so you don't have to go all the way in but here we have lighting right here okay so I'm coloring in here well I'm shading I'm you know I'm not using color right here you can you can also just tint your pieces like this too and then go in and add color right over the top of this. It's like you glaze color in kind of a, it's it's kind of in the spirit of um, black and white photo coloring, tinting, I think they used to call it. And I've done that before on black and white photographs too. It, it's a different look than just going on into something like this with color though, okay. But it is an easy exercise, okay. So there we have lighting right here, okay. So you see, when you do these grayscale exercises too, um, it's a really good um, exercise to do because you, you're fully aware of the value aspect of, you know, your visuals here. You know, when we're working with colors and things like that, we're often thinking of, okay, this is grass right here. So oftentimes we're thinking, okay, that is green or something like that. And we're thinking about it in terms of just a general space to be filled in uniformly, as opposed to thinking of it in lighting. So you can do these exercises like this, but then when you go back to using colors, you're a lot more aware of the aspect of value and light, and also, you know, light being created by variation, variation of in this case, grayscale. So you can, you know, you can think of grayscale in terms of colors too. You're just using various values of it, okay? All right, so here we have dark light, a little bit of dark right here. It's just a little bit of gray. And then we have our light right in here where it happens to be that deer. Now, if the deer was over here, the animal, then I would leave that area illuminated. So it doesn't have to be this thing where it's uniformly, you know, even. You know, these little areas of light can get shifted around wherever you want to. Maybe this area right here gets split into two sometimes. You know, there's a fisher over here and a fisherman over here. You know what I mean? Something like that. Okay? And this area right here, um, you know, it's kind of the focal point. It's the... Uh, it's one of the subjects of the piece, okay? So that's why I leave this light. Okay, this bridge down here with these flowers, right? 
if I darkened it all in, it just it wouldn't make sense as a as a visual kind of anchor and subject matter of a scene. Okay, so let's move on. We got a lot of these to do here, or I want to just get through a lot. <clears throat> okay, so here is one of those instances where I'm I was referring to two different kind of focal points. Okay, I don't want to just darken out my entire cabin right there, and I don't want this guy completely darkened out, but I don't know if I want this whole area to be lit in here, okay? So I have sky, meadow area that has two different subjects, pond, and these rocks down here. So there's a lot more going on here, okay? But let's just start off with the sky first, okay? And remember, I'm doing it in black, you know, you can be doing this in, you know, uh, I don't know, sky blue or something like that, powder blue, right? I'm just talking about, you know, the, giving you the descriptions in terms of the general value of the blue, you know, okay, not some specific color for some line of pads that's powder blue. Okay, now down here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my cabin really into the scene by creating um, a shadow at the base of the cabin. I'll also get the sides of the cabin too because this cabin is being top lit, you know, it stands to reason that the side of the cabin would be a little bit darker, right? So see how that turned, they call it turning that object in space. We're not turning it like this, but we're describing the sides of it and top, okay? Now one of the things I do in my de designs is I, the side of the cabin is inherently darker in your impression because I add tone to the side of it, just like this cabin right here. This is the lake side cabin. You can see where it's darker on the sides and lighter on top. You don't have to be, um, you know, too... I, you don't have to think about it too much because you can just darken what I have dark in the design itself, okay? So I've given you a lot of hints on what to darken just by... It's like a head start on what to, uh, you know, potentially add shadows to. No, it doesn't. It could be a very light shadow. It could be like a 2%, you know, value of brown or something like that. Okay, now here's the thing that I like to do in my trees here, okay? I like to give them a little bit of a shadow too, you know, that they're casting uh, a shadow makes sense because they're not transparent um, objects in there. So see that right there? So see where I'm coming in like this, okay? And that's where we create that little separation between that light up there and this lit area down below. So this is kind of your um, reflected light, you know, down here. Now here's one of the things. I like to leave um, my water elements fairly light, okay? Or just, I like to mimic the sky, okay? So I usually leave those lit. Now sometimes it's the opposite, you know, like if it's a snow-colored scene and, or a snow theme scene and you have completely reflected light, then the water often looks like black, okay? So I'm playing contrast against one another, okay? So let's leave that largely light, okay? But let's get a little bit of separation between there, okay? So see, this is going from dark, light, dark. I mean, this isn't, it's just darker, I should say, okay? So anytime I say dark, just think of it as darker. Light, dark, light. Okay, now what do I do up in here in the rocks, okay? Because this is light against light, what I can do is I can just put a little bit of tone like this on the rocks. And look at that separation that we create within the rock space itself. These look more three-dimensional, but it also kind of brings them out forward from this area back there. So you don't have to think about it to, you know, just in terms of, hey, where would light be, okay? You're checkerboarding things, and you know, they're not squares or something like that, but just in terms of going oscillating light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, okay? And it doesn't matter, let's say, this rock's light right here, and this rock over here is darker. Just play around with it. Okay, the, these rocks are light right here. It doesn't matter. Let's, let's just tone one of those out a little bit. Now this rock's light. Okay, so it just doesn't matter. So going 
a crust like this, it's like dark, light, dark, light, dark. Okay? That's the same thing that's going in here. It's dark, light, dark, you know, I don't know, something like that, okay? So that is that. There's nothing, you know, more you need to do if you want a little bit of tone in your water, then certainly, you know, go ahead and add it in. But like I said, I can add color to these at some point in time, too. So see this right here where I, this is a little bit, you know, lighter, darker right here, and light right here. You can go into things. It's not like, you don't have to think of objects like, you know, completely separated, like outline designs, you do that, okay? So, you know, is this type of, you know, uh, stamping harder or is it easier? It might be harder in terms of concept because you can't see lines. But on the other hand, you don't stay within the lines anyways. So that's what's really hard for people to kind of conceptualize when they're coming over from doing a lot of outline styles of coloring where there's very distinct differentiations between spaces that can be colored uniformly, okay? So let's look at this. Sky, rocks, cabin, water, rocks down here, okay? So let's divide up that sky a little bit, okay? Right, go like that. Then we have these rocks right underneath. Now I like to make this cabin stand out, so I might make the area behind it a little bit darker. Let's not go to black or something like that because I wouldn't be able to see these trees, okay? But let's just add in some grayscale like this. Okay, now is that, you know, area in here just too uniform? Then let's put in a little streak in here like this, okay? Because light looks differently, you know, it falls differently. There's clouds and there's breaks in the clouds and whatnot. So this is where I'm just coming across and I just kind of bisected this a little bit, coming that way, okay? We can put little shadows behind some trees, whatever, okay? It's just variation. I'm not doing something super strategically, like, I know what rock to leave light, you know, or something like that. No, it's just, I'm just doing a general area, okay? And it's largely just kind of streaking in some tones from the outside in, and some streaks just go, get stretched a little farther, okay? Let's do that, let's just, you know, get, show you an example of that up in the sky. Is that where I've come across like this? I know it looks really light, but see, I've bisected that area of light up there. There's just a tiny little bit of light right up there, okay? All right, let's do that down here. This area down here, you can put in some uh, water pattern, you know, and that kind of makes it look a little bit more textured and potentially rich. You know, when you don't have any texture down there, it, uh, it reads more as like a very still lake, you know, with no ripples on it whatsoever, okay? So that with my water, I didn't retain too much white down there, but you don't need to, okay? And this rock right here. Um, let's make this rock separate from that water a little bit. So see where I've added that in there like that? I've kind of gone along with the contours of the rock. And let's bisect the rock up a little bit and make it look a little bit more rich in terms of lighting. So we've oscillated lighting across it, see what I mean? See where this rock looks, doesn't it look more rounded and full by having different light on it like that? See that? So see right up here, it's dark, light, dark, light like that. But see, that I, it looks more three-dimensional that way. And I think the whole piece looks, you know, more three-dimensional that way because you have varied lighting within that space, okay? All right, now I'm not taking my time to completely, you know, light it completely as I would have it. I'm just kind of giving general layouts, but, you know, it's almost done. I don't think I'd need to do too much more. I'm here, I'm adding in a little bit more. You know, I'm bringing in my tones a little bit more. Okay, now this, all this being said, this can all be done. I'm using dye based inks right here, and this is, so far it's glossy cardstock. But these are the same concepts that you do with anything. You do it with pastels, chalks, colored pencil, um, markers, whatever, you know. Um, you can do that. You can do it the opposite, too, if you're doing um, 
dark impressions on dark foils or something like that, then instead of using black, you're using white to come in here, but you're defining those light areas within there. That's really fun too. Okay, now this one right here is some alcohol markers on glossy right here. Okay, now I've already defined a lot of the coloring and whatnot, but let's just do this. Let's see if this will apply. Yeah, it applies right over the Copics, or not Copics, but just alcohol markers. Okay. I'm using a lot of, like, uh, Studio 2 pens and cheap ones. Markers. I'm not against Copic or anything like that. But, see that? Look at that. those rocks, how much richer they look, you know, from varied values in there, right? This is the same rock that's right here, you know, just stamped several times. Okay, let's go into our water. Now, on water, there's something I like to leave my area of water that's falling illuminated. So don't color that out, okay? Let's leave that nice and light. You know, churning water has a lot of, you know, oxygen in it, right? And it often looks white and illuminated. Um, I don't know. I guess you've go to, like have a supai reservation in Arizona, you know, that water, you know, that falling water could look, I don't know, it looks turquoise to me. By and large, you know, you keep it kind of light like that. Now see, even on these rocks right here, you kind of oscillate things. You have them a little bit darker and a little bit lighter like that. But look how those waterfalls are really standing out. You're kind of hitting the shadows like this. And what it makes, by contrast, is it makes those, um, areas of the falling water look really kind of uh, almost like they're glowing and that's a really fun look okay let's see let's develop these rocks a little bit more okay you can also lay these tones down and put your your alcohol markers right on top that's what i usually do i usually don't go marker first then you know shade okay Whenever you're, you know, in any kind of art school or something like that, classes, they generally start you off with um, monochromatics. Not, not like elementary school or something like that, but uh, like colleges, you know, beginning illustration classes are always uh, monochromatic, you know, to get your kind of thinking down and whatnot, to concentrate on value, texture, everything like that. Then they usually kind of bring in color later. Not, not painting, but drawing, okay? Like beginning drawing classes, it's usually not color work. Unless it's really quite minimal. You're usually working with like charcoals and graphite and, uh, I don't know, some pen and ink or something like that. All right, so you see that right there? Look at this, what's going on right here. It's not just, um, this right here is this, okay? We have an area of light. Kind of light like that and then I don't know it's like light and light okay so the right up here this area right here is bisected and uh, you know so it's like this right here but it's the same kind of you know general I don't know if you can even see that drawing there but um, it's the same concept here In instead of this whole area being lit up here and divided you divide this up. There's a little bit of light going across there, but you know you're you're adjusting this general um, lighting scheme per your you know your piece. So in this case, there's two waterfalls like that, like twin falls or something like that. Okay, now here's some um, autumn pieces. Ah, the autumn piece. Let's not do that one. Okay, now let's here, let's do a little bit of this one. Okay, I'm not going to do this one grayscale up on the top like that. But we have this black down here, okay? So let's add a little bit of this shading down here into our black stamped um, imagery down here, okay? Kind of like so. You see how that's making that area look more illuminated now, okay? See, does it look like lighting now that I've colored it in a little bit? I mean, that took like, I don't know, a couple seconds. And 
let's go, let's see if I have a blue. One of these. I'm, I'm still testing these things out, you know, in terms of uh, being uh, something that I'd want to utilize here in my applications. They're, they're working out pretty good. You know, this color, what do they call it? Cotton rounds. They're not too bad. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to decide if they're better than... Um, um, Paper towels. Okay, now up here it's blue, okay? So, let's just go with some blue, like this. Usually I'd use the same color of blue that I stamped my clouds in, but this was close enough. I think that was a salvia blue, Marvy. This one's a Bahama blue, Memento. Okay, but see where we're doing right here? I'm kind of, see where I'm kind of bringing this around this way? That's creating that separation between this area of light and this area of light down here. And of course I've left my cabin rooftop nice and light because this is definitely a top lit illuminated type of uh, piece right here. I have this big area in the center right here. That area in there would be perfect for a quote stamp, right? Or word stamp. So I'm not going to put anything in there. I'm going to leave that illuminated. But see this where I'm coming around like this? And let's let's go ahead and bring this down into the uh, this lower area as well, okay? All right. Up here, um, the clouds really kind of, it's kind of like this one right here. Well, not really. Um, but the clouds themselves created an area of illumination within that space. But you bring this tone around it like that, and can you see the lighting that's going on in here now? We have a light source, and then we have the reflected light down here, okay, in these areas. So this one right here, it's like light. It, I didn't put darkness here, but it's being created by the, uh, the trees. So it's going light, dark, light, dark, light. And again, you leave your water illuminated, and all, and, um, your cabins or structures or people or animals a little bit illuminated too you know so we don't they don't get obscure unless you're making a statement on you know some kind of hidden obscured you know structure or animal or something like that you know some animals hiding there in the bushes you know you can put them in the shade you know and have your viewer have something to kind of look for okay so there you have illumination right there let's go on to this one right here and, I don't know, we'll stop after this one, maybe. I think you guys get the idea. Unless there's something... Oh, here, let's let's do some mountain structures, too, okay? After this one. Okay, so we have this area up here in the sky. I mean, this looks good as far as the layout goes. I mean, you don't have to have a bunch of color up there or something like that. But let's just see what it looks like, okay? So, the clouds right here. I'm bringing some tones in like so. Okay. Look at that, you know, doesn't that make those clouds look like they're glowing a little bit more by adding in some value to that area, okay? This is like finger painting. Who doesn't like finger painting? I don't know, maybe all of it. I don't know how many of us did finger painting after we uh, left elementary school, but we have our tone up there couple seconds worth, right? But look at those clouds kind of glowing up there. Okay, now let's do some black. Was this the black that I was using right here? Huh. I think it was. Yeah, it wasn't one of these. Okay, let's see. I didn't, I didn't even take a look at this. This is looking rather, rather ragged. Okay, so adding this in, adding the shadows right down here. So there's this big area right down here, right? So creating that little bit of separation between the sky and the meadow, okay? But we'll, we'll have this um, area of reflected light right in here somewhere, okay? So let's add a little bit of this tone. I don't think I'll, I don't want to take this one too dark, okay? Because the, the, the farm, the barns and are fairly delicate. I would color those in, you know, with uh, some alcohol marker or something of that sort, okay? 
And we have our cow right here, so let's leave that cow kind of in the spotlight. It's kind of the star of the uh, you know, this meadow in here, okay? But we'll create some variation. So there's a little bit of water down here too, okay? It's just such a tiny amount though, I won't kind of feature it or something like that. But right alongside of these sedge clusters, okay? Now, as I'm doing this too, one of the things that should be noted is I'm using the dry version of this a lot. That's where I'm not getting a bunch of hard streaks or anything like that because, you know, it's like I'm using a, like a powder version of this. It's wet, yeah, but I'm, I'm just saying kind of you can liken it to using like a powder version of black ink. So I think it, I almost think of it like using like, like charcoal or something like that, you know, where it, you know, you're just barely applying any of it. So, you know, whenever I go like that, I'm not getting this. See, I can go like this. You can't, you can't even see it, right? So that's where you get a lot of control over all of your media. Yeah, I'm re-inking like that, but then when I re-ink it, I'm starting it in the darker areas, and it gets drier, and I can add it in like that. But look at this meadow night there. See where you have this kind of reflected light, and there's shadows, and there's you know, this varied terrain um, being described by the, where you add your shadows in there like that. This area in here is a little bit too uniform. Let's bring in a little bit of tone over that. Maybe I'll bring a little bit more attention to, you know, the cow. So I can darken the areas around here a little bit. But, you know, I mean, this, you know, this would look good with some additional color, so I'll leave enough room, ample room for a lot of color application right over the top of that. But you have these darker edges right here. So he has light, a little bit of darkness. Okay, like I said before, I was saying it could be, this is like a 2% value of gray going across here like that to create a little bit of separation. And, you you know, we're going to separate it with color too, like greens or something like that too. But this gives us a head start right here. Our value scale is largely defined and it doesn't take too long. These areas right in here, I put a little shadows at the base of these sedge clusters. This area right in here is largely illuminated, you know, for that cow. And our structures back there are somewhat illuminated too. I don't know, they don't, I don't see them as like a, playing a huge role, role in the piece. Um, you know, it's, you know, we're not focusing on them. Okay, so let's look at these mountains right here. They're all looking fairly similar in terms of values. You can see where they have different values in them. There's lights and darks within those spaces, okay? So if you don't know where to start, you can start in those areas like that, okay? You can kind of make those areas a little bit darker like this, okay? Do you see where that's starting to just vary? The peaks and peak distances too, okay? So. This is what, it, this is, you know, I go hiking, or I used to go hiking a lot more than I do now, but <laughs> one of the things about when you see kind of a range like this is that when you look at it from a distance, it, it could be like you're thinking, okay, I'm going to walk up this ridge right here and just walk up that ridge right there. But little do you know that that ridge back there is, you know, I don't know, 500 yards or a half mile from this one right here because there's this big valley in between, okay? So it stands to reason when you have that type of distance, even if it's that, not that far, um, that there would be different um, amounts of light falling over this range like this, okay? You don't have to think about that too much, okay? So all it means is that you just separate some of it, okay? Like this, okay? So I'm coming up here, you know, and that separates that range from this one right here, or those peak, that peak system from this one, okay? But let's just kind of oscillate things in here, okay? See that right there? You do see, you see the lighting starting to develop, okay? Now this right general area right in here is already a little bit dark, so I kind of start in that area, you know, just to create variation. And again, it doesn't matter 
any, you know, what you keep light and what you keep dark, just as long as you vary it, okay? So let's do this. Let's create a little bit of separation right here, okay? And I'm following the design, too. It's, there's a little bit of a darker area right in here, okay? All right, so we'll do something like that. And do you see the variation, you know, within our space like that? Let's create a little bit of separation between this and this right here, okay? So I'll come in here like so. So look at what that did. Didn't it create, you know, quite a bit of visual space in between this and this right here? Okay, so see how that goes? And I don't know, you can do it from the base too, like this, if you want to. So any type of variation in there, look how much more varied and spatially distant we've, you know, created some of these peaks from one another, okay? And it doesn't take too long to do. And what you do is you just start off with, you know, a very light shade, and then, you know, you add more accordingly. Hold it at an arm's distance whenever you're kind of developing lighting, okay? To generally see what it looks like, okay, because we're kind of focusing in on like this. You know, when we're adding these things in, that's kind of the equivalent of what we're doing. But then you have to kind of hold it out and see um, what your overall lighting scheme looks like. This is kind of shade, you know, spot shading or something like that. But then your light scheme comes into play, you know, when you look at it farther away like that, okay? And that'll tell you, you know, if something, you know, should be adjusted or whatnot, okay? And up here, we just fill in that area up with the light up there. Let's see if there's anything else in here. Oh, well, let's take a look at this one right here. Boy, this one's done kind of demonstrating the... Uh, um, the bridges, or maybe it was the rock wall. I, I don't remember. Um, I guess it was this whole kind of a release. This one's quite old. So let's take a look here. Okay, visual lead-ins. If you watch some other videos, you'll know that I like to leave a visual lead-in like that. So a road, okay, just like a waterfall or something like that. There's a visual flow, okay, to um, lead-ins like this, like roads and paths and streams and whatever, okay? So this is an area that I want to leave largely light, okay? We have a, a wall right there, and then this area right in here is all surrounded with, you know, grass and whatnot, and burnt trees. <laughs> I should intersperse some uh, live trees in there and look a little bit more, less kind of dire. But um, let's go in and do that thing with our, you know, sky, okay? Now that bridge in there, I don't know, it's, it's probably coloring with a marker or colored pencils. It's a little bit more conducive to that. But let's see if we can get a little bit of um, tone on it like this, okay? Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Sometimes, you know, coloring with this... You know, it's not the most detail-oriented uh, applicator, so that's where you come in with, you know, something like that. You know, a pen or something, or a pencil. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so, um, that is being backlit, okay? So we have our lighting going on in the background, but in this case, see, it's largely going to be an area of light like that and an area of light like that. So what we have is our area of light like this, and our area of light, it's kind of over here, okay? But in this case, we have this bridge going across there, kind of bisecting this area of light up in the sky, okay? So let's do that. Let's start. Now, this wall is not, you know, I'm not, that's not no consideration at all, okay? I'm still going to, you know, do something with this wall in here because it's playing a pretty you know, decent role in terms of the visuals of this space. So let's color in this wall a little bit. 
Okay, but let's vary it just like we did with our mountains, okay? So see this right down here where I'm putting some tone on my wall like that. I'll create a little bit of shadow at the base of it too. Like this. But see this right here where I'm leaving some of that wall light like that, okay? So I'm coloring, okay, toning, but we're also lighting it just by simply not coloring in the whole thing, okay? All right, so let's say some light is coming through there. Let's define this visual lead-in a little bit more by toning in the area around it. So again, it could be a stream. Um, a road, a river, those types of things, waterfall, you know. Things that lead us into the, you know, going up something. Okay, now here, let's see, let's add a little bit of tone to it. I don't, you know, want it to be like a, you know, some kind of illuminated road. But just in general, it's, you know, it'll be lighter. Okay. So see this right here, so going in, making the area a little bit darker around it. When you make the area around something a little bit darker, by contrast, the area that you've retained, the light, looks one step lighter, okay? All right, so th that's generally it right there. It didn't take too long to do. And like I said, I can develop it more, but that's your general lighting scheme right there, okay? See this right here? This wall is kind of capturing some light, you know. This area is a little bit darker up here to define the top of the wall. A little bit of a tone right there. It's almost too much right there. Let's bring some of that in a little bit into this road, okay? So it's not like a, yeah, we don't just leave, you know, have to leave something just stark, you know, white or something like that in the area, you know, a lot darker. But see, that looks a little bit better now. But see, in general, you know, we have this road leading back in here into this light area. We can use a little bit more imagery on here too, but um, but just in general, that's your, could be, you know, that uh, definition of a lighting scheme right there. Let's see, let's divide this little area up a little bit here too. And remember, we're gonna, you know, I can use other colors on here too after it, so I don't want to completely, you know, define everything in terms of how dark it might be. Let me tell you, here's an area. See these shadows down here? Like I was talking about, you how you just you can use your imagery for, you know, take your cues from this. There's darker areas on the mountain. I mean, there's shadows at the base of this, you know, this character right here. So you can go in and. Add shadows like that. See that right there? Doesn't that look more full by reiterating what's already on the design? Okay? That's the same thing for walls and things like that. I you know I have areas that are a little bit darker. Here's a tree right here. You wouldn't have this kind of diffused light, it would be more of a you know definitive shadow. But okay, going on the wall here. Walls casting a you know shadow right in here or a bridge. All right. Okay, so working with lighting and monochromatics like that, it's a really good exercise to do. It's what I recommend to all to do um, in your light sensitivity training. You know, when you do these types of things like this, and I understood it, you know, when I got out of school, it's like, you're so much more aware of things like lighting, value, um, texture, and so on and so forth when you work monochromatically, okay? It's because you don't have to think about things like temperature, um, they call it local color, you know, grass is green, sky is blue, etc., you know, it kind of opens you up to other things and it increases your sensitivity for um, kind of more of the foundation of things. You know, when we're working on things.
things like this, um, value, just light and dark, that one aspect of things, and all the grayscale in between. It's not black and white. It's grayscale. It's this range of values um, within your pieces. And if you do this type of thing, if you work on, I don't know, three or four pieces, you don't have to do like as many as I did right here. What is it? Two, four, six, eight pieces right here. All done in a relatively short span of time. You know, because, you know, everything was already stamped out. But when you do that type of thing, you'll retain this sensitivity uh, towards lighting. And then when you go to do your color work and whatever, you'll be able to apply all of this. This will be in you forever, you know, when you work this way, you know, because you're just doing it and you're kind of um, creating this um, kind of conscious awareness towards these types of things. You'll see it too when you go back to your color, you know. It might, you know, there might be a little bit of adjustment, like, you know, because you might be using multiple tones of green in a meadow or something like that and multiple shades of blue, but you'll see that lighting and you'll see that interplay much more clearly by doing these types of exercises like this. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just inherently a good exercise. It's a good exercise for me too, you know, to do these types of things every now and again, you know. I don't think I need to do it, you know, because I'm looking for these things all the time anyway. So you can say I'm kind of doing these exercises, but with color. But, you know, just playing around with it like this, I don't know, and seeing like, you know, this one right here was the most complex because there's a lot of different objects within the space, not just you know, the same big meadow or something like that without a lot of um, kind of textural or shape changes within it. You know, these things represent things that are sticking up in the air, you know, and uh, distance within those spaces. But, you know, it's just easy enough to do. We'll see this oscillation of light and dark. See, there's light and dark within this little bit of a grassy area right here. This little grassy area right here that's opened up to the sky. There's a little bit of light and dark in that. Right over here we have light and dark. On our bridge, there's light and dark in that. Okay, Sky area, same thing. Road, light and dark. Wall, light and dark in there. So you're oscillating light and darks on objects as well as spaces like that. So just look for that and just don't, you know, don't color everything up uniformly and then you'll develop those things like light sources. Okay, I don't know if this is a light source, but in a scene like that, that illuminated water like that kind of becomes your light source. And then you have this area of reflected light down here, okay? You know, because this thing in here wouldn't be light, you know, rocks or something like that, but um, anything that's like super reflective of light or light itself, okay? So anyways, oscillate things around and you are good with your lighting, okay? And then if you've seen one of my previous videos, if you just go too dark on everything, it's like, oh my god, I lost all my light. Then just make other areas a little bit darker so that the areas that you have inherently, you know, already applied will look lighter by contrast. So there's no, not, not a point of no return unless you just black out everything, you know, with the full saturation of black, but that's not going to happen. Okay, so anyways, Lighting fun, and boy, I do have a whole big stack of uh, um, stamp sketches still to go through. I don't think I'm going to get through all of these right here. There's just too many here. I don't know, this is like a hundred or something like that. But I do want to get through some, I don't know. It's, uh, maybe it's a maybe it's a lifetime goal to get through all of those. <laughs> all right, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.